everybody, welcome back to another episode of Xeno Gears. Last time we talked about how the religious themes that are being introduced in this section here relate to the overall plot, or at least mentioning that they do. And I think, yeah, I think that's the big thing to take away from there. So now we're continuing on with the uh, Ultra Exposition episode. Whew. So, you know, it had been a very long time since I'd actually gone back and watched... No, no, I want to talk to her. Since I'd gone back and watched episode one of this, and, like, the energy of that versus this is completely different. Like, it's surprising to me uh, how different the tone is. Because the tone here is just kind of regular, kind of me keeping talking, keeping the, you know, hopefully saying interesting things, etc. and so on. And the first one was just like, hey guys, let's play a video game. Wow, that thing that happened there was pretty cool, huh? Here's why I like this. And it's interesting that it's evolved from that into more of a regular thing. Like, I only have... <laughs> I only have one, uh... Fuck, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know the word I'm looking for. I only have one speed or one tempo when it comes to doing LPs. Then again, that probably wasn't the best way to start. And just be like, hey, this is going to be a relaxing gameplay thing. I mean, yeah, it's still about the gameplay, but... That is, uh... Different from the tone this LP has taken. Um, and I don't necessarily think that's, that's a bad thing. In fact, I think it's probably better overall than what we were doing before. The fact that I'm uploading hour-long videos, period, is kind of crazy, because that's kind of YouTube poison, uh, for the most part, unless you have a dedicated following that um, is down for listening to you for an hour, which I don't. Um, Are we stuck? Yeah, we were stuck until Satan, Saiten, whatever, came and got stuck up into the party. But yeah, so, let's see, does it give us the angle? No, it does not. That was weird. Switched away from the thing again, sorry. It just happens sometimes. I don't know what to do or say about it. Anyways, so... Yeah, I'm going to keep doing it this way because this is the format I've decided upon. And, I'm, you know, this obviously, these videos are very niche for very niche people. Uh, people who like this game are people who are interested enough in JRPGs to sit around for 60 hours of the, you know, it's not going to be 60, it's going to be like 40 or 50, but that many hours of a... Let's play to see what happens in the plot because maybe they can't play it or maybe they don't want to play it or, you know, something like that. Um, this isn't for the people who are like, oh, easiest way, get COD points, loot box overwatch. Right, I don't remember what I got to do at this point, so I'm going to keep. Oh, there we go. I don't remember what I gotta do as I sprint directly towards what I've gotta do. What you got, Mason? What you got for me? You got me some stuff? You got some stuff? That's nice. So who's ready for the plot dump? Always calms my heart. That's nice. So 
So like I said in the last episode, up to this point, we've just kind of set the stage for everything that's been going on. And granted, rescuing Margie was kind of step one in in continue or carrying the story forward based on our own actions. But, excuse me, uh, this is where it's really like, here's the, here, here's the deal, what are you going to do about it? And then we decide to do the thing. So... The last time we had a ton of exposition... It was just sit down and hit the X button. Um, <laughs> here they, they let you pick what you want to hear about first. All right, you fucking old men. Old men, I'm older than these two at this point. But I guess they've lived a lot more than the 18-year-olds in the room. <gasps> Just kidding. <laughs> So this part's, I, I consider this part very interesting um, because it shows, like, Bart's the crown prince of Ave, and therefore he should have a very good grasp or should be given a very good grasp of everything that's going on in the world since he should eventually be, you know, playing a major role in it. And yet, even this guy, who's like, he hears Solaris, and all he knows, and not for sure, is, is that where Gebler is from? So that should give you an idea exactly how mysterious uh, Gebler and Solaris are to people who just live on the surface. Where even even the, the crown prince of what is honestly the largest country on the planet has... A very murky idea of who they are, where they are, etc. Which I think is really cool. Um, there's always, not always, but more often than not, there is some some type of super shadowy evil organization. Uh, Pulling the strings behind, you know, whatever major plot is happening in whatever story. I mean, it happens. It's it's popular in Japanese media. It's popular in... Oh, that's weird. It's popular in Japanese media. It's popular in American media. It, it's always part of a plot to twist where it's like, you know, it, you don't know anything. or you know, I mean, there's so many different... Uh, aberrations of it, I guess, would be an appropriate word. Probably not. Um, mutations might be a better word of it. But it's it's a fairly popular story beat in a lot of these larger stories. Um, I can't think of any other one where before you have a big issue with it or um, instead of it being revealed right at some critical moment you literally just sit down with somebody and you're like what's the deal what's the deal with this bullshit so now we get to ask our questions with this creepy ominous music which i really 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 like it's a great track hope you guys are ready for it for the next 15 20 minutes I don't have any water next to me today, so... Ugh. I hope I don't dry out live on stream. I'm not streaming this. But 
That's the best term, I guess. So this is interesting to me. Um, because the plot dump here is coming from Zigurd. Zigurd. Um, Satan seems very... How do I put it? He seems very uneasy with putting out all of this information. Uh, but he's kind of... hes it, You can tell by the way he's talking. And, and... It's actually, even in the translation, it's kind of... Uh, interesting. Even in the translation, it's interesting that they kind of get that unease in him providing information here. Um, because he's giving he's giving the bare minimum information possible. He's trying. He's very. What's the word I'm looking for? He's very carefully choosing his words. So here's the big thing that literally Solaris is in the sky. They don't explain whether it's in space or not. Uh, but it's up in the sky somewhere. And it is separated from the rest of the world by an interdimensional vortex, basically. Controlled by... <laughs> That's computer controlled, basically. Which is crazy that they have that level of technology. Um, it raises a lot of questions. If you think about it, because um, the question at that point is, if it has this level of technology, how is it not completely taken over? How is it not completely taken over the entire planet at this point? And at what? Or, or what is what is it benefiting from letting this 500 year war continue on keep in mind it was explained at the very beginning the only point at which Solaris and Gebler intervened in the war going on on the surface is right when it's it started to become apparent that Ave was going to be losing uh, the war and basically stabilizing the war again, uh, or stabilizing the 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 sides. Um, so clearly, they have something to benefit from this war going on. Um, and if you read both between the lines, you can see that. Uh, the first time I played through it, I had no fucking idea. It's just like, oh, there's bad people in the sky. Okay, let's deal with our stuff, which is the same conclusion that. Uh, that our main characters here, our main cast, comes to. Uh, because, yeah. It's much easier to fight the enemy right in front of you than to fight the enemy that you need a trans-dimensional gate key to get to. Uh, a very Aryan vibe from uh, these Solarians as well. There's definitely a clear allegory drawn here. Um, now, I, I mentioned again that this war has been, this war on the surface has been going on for 500 years. Pretty much, if you haven't noticed up to this point, pretty much everything important that has everything important to the background of the story that's going on here. The big stuff, not like character backgrounds, etc. But all the big stuff, the religions, the war, all of this stuff 
goes back about 500 years. Um, and it's interesting to me that it's not harped on more, that more people aren't like, what happened 500 years ago that set all this stuff in motion? Even though it is critical to the plot, and it becomes critical much later on. Um, it is th this this 500 year old point in history just start kind of started everything and, and, and set the stage for where the world is now. Um, I wish they'd emphasized how important that was earlier on because it, it leads to it would have led to a lot less jarring of a plot dump later on. Um, however, the way they do it is... That line makes no sense to me. Um, it The plot dump later, I mean, you get it all and you go, Oh, you, you know, like, like you're supposed to with a plot dump. A big one, anyways. Um... But here, he, mm, I feel like maybe they, they waited too long to explain a lot of stuff. And like this plot dump here, we're getting, I feel this one comes in at just the right time. Um, because basically you're at a lull in the story where it's like, what do we do next? And so getting this backstory and explaining more of what's going on in the world broadens your view of what's going on in the world and allows the characters to make a better decision and gives the player much more context for, for why they're making these decisions and why these two, specifically Sigurd and uh, Satan, are doing what they're doing. I understand. So that's the plot dump. It honestly wasn't as long or as bad as I made it sound for the past three episodes. Um, we are going to get to... Um, we're going to get to run around for a little bit here, and then from there... Yeah, you probably should have. Uh, we're going to get to run around a little more, and then we're going to get to plan our next thing here, which is a little bit more of the exposition. But it's really interesting. Because um, it's like, finally, this uh, beast, uh, this this faction is starting to move beyond just raids, etc. Uh which I think is interesting because it seems like not that these guys that Barton his crew were powerless because clearly they have one of the uh, they have a major battleship that they've been using effectively for some time but it, it seems like and I mean it's convenient for the plot that it happens this way but the the tipping point for Oh, we're going to be able to... That's not the way I want to go. The... the Or is that the way I want to go? I don't fucking know. The tipping point for now we can begin to... Um, take our plans into action seems to be when Faye and Satan show up. Um, and it only carries on from here. Which is cool. It's fun. It's a very well-written, well-structured story. Um, as I've mentioned a million times before, the second half is a bit of a mess. Um, and the, the story behind that um, was more or less... <sighs> cat hair everywhere. Uh, was more or less the team ran out of money. But there's a much more interesting... Uh, story to that and I will explain that once we get to the second disc to uh, 
give you guys a bit of a cliffhanger for my own inane ramblings. Um, but it's actually very interesting. All right, let's see. Cool. It has never gone beyond simply maintaining their own empire or self-preservation, which is interesting considering how advanced they are. Let's keep on keeping on. Sorry, I'm dealing with some clerical shit as I'm running this. I should probably cut here, but... Yeah. There's text on screen to read. I would be completely understanding of anybody who decided to watch this on mute. Just so they didn't have to hear me. You miss out on this awesome soundtrack, though. Perhaps this guy is supposed to be a star of hoop. What <laughs> 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 Also notice Satan is much more open about Ramses than he is about Solaris and its general backgrounds. It's very straightforward. Fight them sooner or later. A longer war than that with Shikan. Well, that's strange because even if you take out Shikan, you're still. Er, yeah, fuck it, I'll keep calling him Shikan. Shaq, maybe I should call him Shaq. Um, you're just going to have to deal with the war with Kislev, which I don't think y'all have any reason to fight, so y'all would probably sue for peace immediately, but... It's inter... Uh... I have to stop saying it's interesting, but it's appropriate... that they're thinking this way. <laughs> because, like, no BS. Is this where I want to go? I think this is it. Could be wrong, though. No, I don't think this is it. I'm trying to avenge your father, but I don't think things will be that easy, though. It's interesting that more background on Solaris, and granted the, the war that's been going on it has been basically a backdrop at this point and hasn't really been integral to what's going on in the plot, and honestly it never is, but you would think a war that's been going on for 500 years would be the most important thing to deal with, probably the thing you would want to deal with more immediately, then again, you can't do anything while Shikan's in power, so you have to take your throne back. Very appropriate. Whew. When I was a kid, I borrowed stuff from there and got in big trouble. What did you take? I stole shit. About to be playing Navy again, boy. Oh, 
overall a pretty neat cast of characters so far. You get some, you get some characters in your party later that are incredibly interesting as you're dealing with their contribution to the plot. But once you get done with their contribution to the plot, they're just there's nothing more important about them. There's a lot of newer games that handle that differently. Uh, probably the big standout ones would be the Persona games. Um, where every character is a character from the moment you meet them until the end. I can't think of anybody who's just... You know, there, does their important role part, and then just hangs out and maybe says one or two things in those games. So this is cool, right? Problem is how to deal with Gebler. You're not just gonna sit by and watch quietly. So is this where we zoom in on the thing? Also notice Faye has barely said anything. In fact, I think for the past hour, he's barely said anything. In fact, the only time he had any real agency at all is when he walked in on the uh, portrait of Sophia and he's like, Oh my god, that's Ellie, and then had some sort of hallucination. Because honestly, all of this is above him, and he's just there to kind of support at this point. Which I was just talking about other party members that you get that have no agency after a certain point. Faye has so little agency throughout so much of the story where like none of this really revolves around him at all. He doesn't even he doesn't even necessarily have to be in the room. He's as it's as pointless of him being there as you know, the, the the side characters you get that just hang out later on. There's a lot of RPGs from this point that had problems like that, like they couldn't throw in extra dialogue or change things based on who you had in your party, so on and so forth. Um, so, I mean, I'm not, I'm not really knocking the game, it's just like, oh, you're just here now, and okay. And it's really interesting that <laughs> Faye is almost treated as a side character, even though he's the character you play as, for a lot of uh, these parts. Especially the parts concerning Bart, where it's literally, you know, well, we need to get Bart as thrown back, or we need to deal with Shikan, or we need to do this or that. Like, the, the whole Bledovic thing. Like, yeah, we were exploring his Fae, and yeah, Fae had an important part in the tournament, but the person doing the real work at that point was Bart. The person, even in the even in the underground raid, the person who was dealing with the... the who was dealing with the brunt of everything. I mean, they kind of spread it out among everybody, but Bart and his crew are the guys defending their own base, which makes sense. I mean... Even if it wasn't for the whole, you know, Faye is... You know, having his little temper tantrum about fighting because he doesn't like fighting and he doesn't know what he wants to do. Um, the fact that Bart's basically the main character of that section, and this section as well, is kind of appropriate. That's very appropriate. Um... In fact, I think, honestly, Bart's, for like the first third of the game, Bart's more of a main character than Faye is, and he only really gains agency as time goes on. Um, which, taking into account the fact that he's basically three years old at this point, he doesn't remember anything, you know, from the amnesia and everything like that, that makes sense. Um... 
And he definitely does really come into his own later. Um, and I like that the game treats him that way. I can't think of many games that are treated that way. Or where the main character is treated that way. Normally the main focus of all of the game is the main character and what the main character is doing. And how the main character f is feeling and reacting to the things that are going on around him. But at this point, like Fay will just flat up say at some point, I'm just here to help. Put me where you need me. Um, almost in those exact words. I mean, it's been many, many years since I've played through this. So I don't remember everything verbatim. I used to remember everything verbatim. Uh, it should say a lot about how much I like this game. Simply wanted to see the current distribution. I have additional information about our base border fleet. demoted. I said that before it popped up. My audio isn't off. Fuck off. Kidding. You guys want to yell at me in the chat about anything, please do it. The more interaction, the better. Young one, he has not been able to adapt to the change in tactics, particularly following the introduction of Gears straight from his dependence on large naval guns. There's a really cool uh, sequence coming up here that has to do with that. Uh, spoilers, I guess, but, you know. He's also an excellent thing for pirates. That's funny. So... What the fuck was I going to say? Oh, yeah, they never really explain... Um... Like, they never really give an exact time frame for when Gears were suddenly rediscovered by this current civilization. Um, they never really explain, like, oh, exactly 41 years ago, or 18 years ago, or fuck, five years ago, um, we started discovering and using these gears uh, that were discovered in ruins that were about 500 years ago. 500 years old. There we go, I can talk again. Uh, there's the 500 year old thing again. Um, uh, so that kind of gives you the fact that there's a, a frontline commander um, who hasn't been able to adapt to the change in tactics tells me that gears were probably discovered about a decade ago. <clears throat> And they've only really become a major military strength in the past three or four years to the point that um, that these countries are starting to be able to develop new models because um, phase gear, if you remember from the beginning, is considered an ex a new experimental model of gear created by Kislev. Um... And so, if I were to if I were to put a time frame on it, I would say probably ten years. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, the reason I say that is because considering what these guys were fighting with before, which was probably more of a conventional war with firearms, etc., so on and so forth. Um, to be able to basically catch up to and start utilizing and developing uh, these mechs, basically the gears, it, it would have to take at least that amount of time to build up enough to where you could build a military force out of it. So at this point, it's probably only been used by special forces and to just... You know, do cleanup on the front lines. I mean, imagine you're fighting a conventional war like what you see nowadays. 
and somebody rolls up in a what are these things 30 40 foot tall mech that's more or less impervious to your gunfire rockets so on and so forth um, <clears throat> So they were probably fielding them as quickly as they could, as safely as they could, because, I mean, you lose a gear when you have six gears in your army. You've lost one-sixth of this major upper hand you have. It's kind of like the United States at the end of World War II, where they dropped the only two nuclear weapons that they had, that we had, I'm American, they dropped the only two nuclear weapons they had, but the propaganda was, we just have these things lying around now, so you'd better surrender, because we're just going to keep using them. I mean, a lot of that was also not just to end that war, but as a show of force to the Russians to say, hey, you should probably stop advancing on Europe and, and the rest of the world now, because we'll bomb you, which is part of the reason we immediately... Uh, immediately entered into a Cold War with Russia after the Second World War. But it was probably the kind of the same thing here. Like, you show this massive show of force with the six gears or whatever you have. The only problem is, and uh, you can chalk this up to the ethos, who I will talk about in a second here, both countries basically got it at about the same time. Um, so... <laughs> Imagine, basically, if Japan and the United States at the same time were like, we'll fucking nuke each other. It's like that would lead to, I mean, at that point, that would lead to mutually assured destruction. But uh, that <laughs> you would want to wait to really use it as a military, like, as the core of your military strength. Whew. All right, so we have to let him know when we are through preparing. Um, which, you know what, we're going to go save really quick, uh, because this, once I get characters back, there's a new wind blowing today. Interesting little touch. Where was I going? Where was I going? Where was the save point? The save point was in the shop. Got to go to the shop. Is this the shop? I think this is the shop. This is the shop. Okay, cool. I'm not mistaken, but I think that the moment we say we're ready to go, it'll start the whole sequence, and I won't have a chance to do any leveling or anything like that. Nine, ten, nine. So here. Um, and I want to take some time to actually do some uh, leveling and death blow, uh, whatever, at this point. So I'm going to have to do that. Ooh, scratch my back. So let's see. Either the cut will be later or the cut will be right now. All right. So uh, I cut there. I know I was a little unsure before, uh, but I played a little bit ahead and checked out all the stuff. Um, but if you looked at the menu last and look at it now... Um, FaZe gained like three or four levels, and Satan has gained four levels, but more importantly, both of these characters have learned all of their death blows, and learned the first six combo point death blow, uh, which for both of these characters will unlock their, uh, level three combos in their gears. Um, I had a nightmare of a time actually... Uh, doing doing the ting. I had a nightmare of a time, actually, this is not the way I need to go, um, actually doing the leveling I need to do, because the only real good area to level around here is... All right, we're ready to go. The only good area to level around here is a forest to the north of the city on the other side of some mountains. And there are some enemies in there that take forever to fight. Um but do no damage, and those guys are fine because they also give a decent amount of experience. Uh, but then there's these other guys. There are these, um, the big fat guy from the tournament. Yeah, his model's in the forest up there, and he's basically a forest troll. 
Um, and at lower levels, those guys can one-shot your characters here. They're almost as strong as a gear. Um, so between actually getting killed by these guys and having to deal with like freezing issues and stuff like that, which luckily I don't think we've had to deal with any freezing on the video, um, has cre or created a bit of a nightmare. Um, but no big deal. I mean, what was a day or two, actually a couple hours over the course of like two or three days for me, was no time at all for y'all, so. That's the point. All the story, most of the content, none of the tedium. All the story, most of the combat and content, I guess those both fit together. None of the tedium, which, I mean, you throw on like a, a, any show or any video or a podcast or whatever, throw this in the background on really low volume and just go for it, and leveling's a breeze, you can do it while you do other stuff. But, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was more annoying than I expected it to be. It really, w it really would have been nice to have that third character, but honestly, Bart isn't going to be too important here. Um, kind of a spoiler, but I'm not going to give any more than that away, hopefully. So I like how the theme here, even the nuns who are supposed to be asexual are like, Bart, come smash! Bart smash! Bart smash, 14-year-old! I know, there's something wrong with me. And she's literally like, hey, you're 14, your tits are coming in. Just, you know. No, Bart's gonna want smash. Kind of creepy. Each squad of gears take off. This is kind of semi unimportant. <clears throat> I like how the the range is called the Rockies. Um, I'm sure that's just a placeholder name. That warship is outdated. You're only going in as a small unit. So yeah, this is right before we take off and take hold of our future with both hands. Ganbate. You sure ain't my pops. That's goofy, I like it. So, I wonder when I see these military guys, who clearly they have a uniform, they've probably been trained, they're not the ununiformed pirates floating around the rest of the ship. I wonder if they weren't like the old, like, Fatima Royal Guard or something like that. Um... Because there's no real explanation for them otherwise. Mm. Yummy beer. Tearful goodbye. So remember when I said that this thing's kind of like a gun? couple episodes back so look at this that's a fucking revolver chamber thing in the back there um this thing he's standing on is a fucking motherfucking mass accelerator look at this It also really confuses me when I see that, how the rest of the ship is built up, uh, to be perfectly honest. Also, that looks cool as shit, I think. I hope y'all think so, too. So we're, what, nine, almost ten episodes in? How y'all liking the damn LP so far? I feel like I've done my best to be somewhat entertaining. Long last, we are heading to Bloodovic tomorrow.
I don't remember what, when they say Bart was ousted. Like, it had to have been when he was, like, somewhere between three and six, or three and six, probably. Beer good for record. <sighs> ah, excuse me. That's nice, but I don't think it's part of anything. Actually, you know what? What do you got? You got anything worth buying? Nope, that's right. You're always with the same shit. Yes. You will be of such service again, because you never get better stuff. You kinda suck. So... At this point in the game, you can wander around the whole goddamn ship. You know what, I never showed off the... the... gear bay, so... Here's that. Well, we might have been here once. Um... They give you free reign of the ship. And the problem with that is the place you have to go to keep the uh, the story going. Okay, I've got one of those. The place you need to go to keep the story going is has been shown to the player already. Okay, I'm pretty sure we have all the upgrades. Uh, has already been shown to the player as a place you cannot go under normal circumstances. And the reason that that's a problem is because, like, if you don't try it... And you'll see what I mean in a second here, but if you don't try the thing that you already know you're not going to be able to do, but in this case are able to do, um, you get stuck here forever. And the thing you have to do is go up this fucking ladder. And that's not, like... It's, it's, it's given as off-limits. Yes. That's the game design of the time. Guess I'm going to be the king. You'll get used to it. Oh, the stupid headset. There we go. There's a very specific reason he's bringing that up. It's not... covered now. It's not covered until way, way later in the game. Uh, but there's a very specific reason he's bringing that up. Also, did y'all notice that the, uh, the image was just flipped? Because Sigurd has his patch on his right side, but when the picture was on the other side, it was over his left eye. Just because they flipped the thing. It's a goofy little detail. This is nice. It's a nice little sentiment thing. It's a good character building in this game. Like more of it... I feel like there's almost too much character building. But I'm probably just saying that because I already know all of these characters. Everybody thinking about everybody, big creepy giant moon.
There's the moon from somewhere else. Up. Oh. Speaking of smash. Hey, look, it's Ramses and Mayang. Ramses smash. So I don't remember if this is the first or second time you get to see this. I think this is the second time. I think the last time was there was a little bit of it during that boss fight with Carr. So obviously it's super anime and it's super everybody's got some kind of superpower thing or some people have are super powered and ultra powerful. But Considering the fact that these two armies that have been at war for 500 years are completely changing their tactics around with the introduction of these ultra-powerful mecha, you know, these gears, the fact that there's a guy who can just start punching and kicking the shit out of them is crazy. Also, the timing of introducing whatever the fuck that is is um, impeccable. That thing is also crazy and don't go gun go don't go done kill everybody. So there is Graf. Here's this thing that kind of looks like Veltal if you think about it, and it's destroying the ever-loving shit out of the robots in some battle somewhere. Why is he on foot? <laughs> Ramses gets smashed. Ramses gets smashed. I'm a fucking child. Damn, look at his pixelated pecs and abs. So hot, oh my god. And now there's Mang. And she's like, I'm naked. I'm cold, let me warm my feet on your back. Oh, he's not naked, darn. No fun! Make everybody naked all the time. We broke into their bedroom as Bart. Oh shit! He just teleported in. He resembles you greatly. <clears throat> so this is more like, oh shit, what's going on? What are these people doing? Oh, there he goes. Don't worry, I won't steal your prized possession. I'll cooperate. So raising more questions about, first of all, who the hell Mayang is, who Graf is, how Graf has an association with her. This is where it starts to get real good. I mean, it's been fun so far, but this is where it starts to get good. It's also strange that this is the only sand submarine that exists. <sighs> the idea of a sand whale is super cool. I want to see what a sand whale is. Also, he's a dolphin! Why the fuck is he a dolphin? Yeah. 
So we've raised some hell at the border. I mean, we haven't. We haven't seen anything yet, but... Basically, well, not basically, but all the stuff that's happening um, now is happening kind of in tandem. Um, it's kind of staggered in terms of, of what's going on in time. Like right now when that's happening, um, this was already happening. And the stuff with Faye that we're going to see in a bit is going to have been happening as well. So remember these assholes? I can't tell if they're being intentionally chauvinist or what. Also, fuck that guy. Look at him. Fuck him. He is face I want to punch. His face I really want to punch. I honestly find it kind of annoying that these guys are like... ...named characters with, you know, character portraits and whatnot, because... ...they kind of contribute nothing. So that's Ellie's gear. Uh, Vierge is French for virgin. Um, there's a joke with that later. Um, I will point it out when I get there. Because it's actually kind of funny. So except for being vaguely humanoid, there really isn't anything in the way of like a standard model of gear. <clears throat> um, there is for the basic... What's the word I'm looking for? There is for the... Damn it. Immediate fight. There is for the basic like Ave and Kislev troops. Hey. They can't even hit me with their regular attack. Or they can't hurt me, I should say. But yeah, there are some basic models for Ave and Kissel of troops, but it seems like all the Special Forces guys get these weird, crazy, custom Gundam-like fucking things. I'm burping from the beer. Excuse me. So in this fight, it's... or in this... in any type of gear exploration, and the, the sand thing was the first place, and honestly, it's not that big of an issue there. Oh wow, that's almost triple the experience I was gaining fighting in the other place. Um, anyways, when you're in these big, long, protracted, like, gear dungeons, it is important to conserve fuel. Um, which is one of the places that I don't even remember if I'm going it the right way. It's been so long since I've done this. Hey, perfect timing. Um, conserving fuel is super duper important. These guys take some some hits, though. Um, but conserving fuel is super important, because normally these things are punctuated with a boss fight, and in lots of cases, you don't get the opportunity to heal or refill your fuel or anything like that. So you can walk into boss fights with a, with a fucking handicap, which, as you can guess, is no good. Received magnetic coat. Is actually a... Ah, fuck! I was trying to jump. When the game is loading... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? When the game is loading... Um, a fight. And, um, I was watching... A recent review of this game by, uh, a, a channel called Pelvic Gaming. Really cool chick. Um... And she mentioned this as super frustrating. It was frustrating. It still is frustrating. Um, when the game is loading a fight, 
um, back in the day, you had access to, or you could hear on the PlayStation, you could hear the 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 loading happening, so you would know that it's happening. But um, with the way I'm playing it now, you can't hear that. And when it's loading a fight, this is great. When it's loading a fight, you're not able to jump. Oh look, it hit me. It's just random, it'll go between like, fueling me up and then actually trying to hit me. And you could probably back out, but there's no point. Haha, <laughs> you're dead. Oh wow, I just noticed how fucked up the perspective is here. I guess I'll have to fix that for the next episode, because we are about done for today's episode. I don't think I was supposed to be able to make that jump. Grab another item over here while we're at it. But yeah, some of the most difficult boss fights in the game are difficult just because you have to run through some area gauntlet to get to it um, and you're statistic statistically less likely to win because you're not at your full power you can't use all your death blows or maybe you're super low on you know ether points and I mean every every game is kind of built like that you know where if you're not healing as you're running through a dungeon and like Final Fantasy 7 or you know any of these games honestly especially the older ones where you couldn't just like automatically heal yourself or anything um, if you didn't heal yourself by the time you got to come on yeah if you didn't heal yourself by the time you got to a boss fight you would be kneecapped um, and the reason that's a problem here is because I can't just take an item and refill my fuel um, or my uh, my gears, hit points, armor points, I can't remember what specifically they're called. Um, and that becomes a problem. Now you do later on get items that allow you to re... Uh, to heal your gear. Ooh, I want to grab the item. Uh, you get equipable items that allow you to heal your gear, but they use like a percentage of your fuel, like 30 or 40. Th between 30 and like 70 percent of your fuel there's one that for like 10 but they heal proportionately more based on what you're using and that can become oh that can be a mess because then you're in in, in a fight and you're like do i want to heal 30 percent of my health by using 30 percent of my total fuel it's not fuel remaining it's total fuel so, if I have a thousand fuel, and I only have 400 left, and I'm in a boss fight, but I want to heal, and I use the 30% one, I just did this fucking, didn't I? Anyways, and you want to use, like, the 30% one, it becomes a problem, because then you're left with 10% of your fuel. I did totally just use that. I'm gonna take damage here. Oh no! Punch shit out you boy. You won't die. This is a really cool enemy because it's this giant fucking insect with like a plant growing out of the back. And it's like attached itself to what's just like a standard Ave military gear. Which I think is a really neat design. Alright, so... Seem to become a little lost in here. Oh, and I saw some really strong looking gears flying above here. I found these things. So if you if you click can't trust you, you fight him and then you don't have a healer. Um, you don't want to do that because he follows you further on in, I think. I'm 90% sure you get to heal with him again at some point. Uh, oh. Let's do a quick refill, and then we'll save, and then we'll call it a day for the episode. I hope to see you again! Alright, yeah. So, that'll be... Oops, because I'm in a fight. I guess that won't be our episode for the day. Ah, oh, shit, it's an Edelweiss. 
Uh, these things can do a lot of damage. Not too much damage, but enough where I'd probably want to heal again. But I don't know, I'll be fine. Everything will be fine. Ow! You son of a bitch! <clears throat> if I'd used an attack and then a death blow here, I'd be using like... <clears throat> 80? 80? Yeah, I'd be using like 80 fuel, but I'm not, it's not that big of a deal. I'd rather just do this. Because that's not going to become, or that's not going to be that useful uh, in the fights that I have coming up ahead. And you can tell it's in its like, like near death state from the, the damage animation. Which I think is cool. Did you get that? I don't think you get that with, uh... Yeah, hey, it just fell over. I don't think you get that with, uh, the sprites. The sprites don't have anything like that as far as I remember. Alright, so here we go. So, that's gonna be it for today's episode of Xenogears, or Wunderbar Let's Play. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed yourself. If you did, you should check out the next one. I've kind of, I've gotten into a good habit of releasing like one of these every two weeks. I could probably release them faster, but I want to pad out my release schedule. That's kind of disingenuous. It's actually, it's easier for me to do it like that. Why am I doing that? I just saved. Anyways, if you guys are enjoying it, tell your friends about it, subscribe, like the channel, or like the video, comment, all that good stuff. Uh, thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you guys for the next episode. Goodbye.